our God this morning. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? You know, we are all children of God. And this next song that we're going to sing, we're going to talk about just that. In the book of Romans, um, Paul, when he writes the letter to the church in Rome, he says, So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body you live in, for all are led by the Spirit of God, or the sons of God, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, today we are all children of God. You know, tomorrow is not promised, but if you believe in Christ, then you are also a child of God. Oh 
find this to be a place of worship where you come close to God and God is with you at this time. There is a card in front of you though if you would like to fill that out. It's just a welcome card and if you'd like to put anything on there, any information, a prayer request, um, anything that you're concerned about that you would like us to be praying for, um, please do so. And you can put that in the offering plate or you can hand that to the pastor uh, on your way out of church today. I do have several announcements uh, for you. I'm going to go through the upcoming events on page three. Uh, first, I want to let you know there is no adult cantata practice tonight. So if you're in the choir and you're in the cantata, uh, please, please pass it around to others that you know of. Uh, but there is no practice tonight. But everything on Wednesday is the same. You will have uh, handbells and you will have your adult choir practice then. Also, reminder that Monday is the VBS meeting. This is switched from last week. Um, so please, if you're involved in BBS in any way or want to be involved in BBS, please come to that meeting on Monday at 6.30. Also on Tuesday is the Senior Adult Luncheon. Um, so please come. That'll be soup, salad, and dessert. And Amy Ladd, is that correct? Yes, will be our entertainment. So Another one I'll remind you of is pajama party is this Saturday. Yes, it's not for us, um, but it can be if you want to be involved and help out with the children. You can wear your favorite pajamas, as long as you know they cover everything up. We wanna make sure of that. <laughs> and so, so please bring your favorite pajamas, like you know, if you have like Elmo or Dr. Seuss or anything of that nature. Um, but that'll be this Saturday uh, from five to nine, and it's for three, th uh, three year olds up to fifth grade. So, and I know that they could use any help possible, but also um, if you are attending, uh, please go on the, the website and register. It's printed in the bulletin on page five. And lastly, I just want to say a big thank you to the Samantha dolls have been very busy. They have been working really hard. Uh, they did 15 Samantha dolls, went out the door this week uh, that were blessed. And they went to the Hope of Appalachia organization based in Culpeper, Virginia. This organization provides much needed basic necessities to children in some of the poorest countries in the Appalachian Mountains. And it is these children that will be receiving these Samantha dolls. So again, thank you to our Samantha dolls and what they do. It is a true blessing to see them when I come by on Tuesdays and I see them working on it and what they're doing. And those dolls make a difference in children's lives. Um, thank you for the ministry you provide. 
And may those dolls, those $15 go and bless those children that receive them. Let us prepare our hearts for a time of worship. Thank you. Josh. Welcome back. Yeah. Yeah. Terrorist, yeah. Thank you, Paige. And I want to thank Paige also again for doing such a far, uh, fabulous job in my absence last week in every regard, including bringing the sermons last Sunday. And I've had uh, excellent reports about that. And I am so grateful to know that he is very capable and uh, competent to lead you in this way it really is a blessing. And thank you all for our trip away. We thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a blessing. Um, kind of hard to get back in a way, but uh, so be it. And it is good to have that time. I would uh, like to thank Marilyn Light. She's provided some beautiful flowers here today. She's remembering uh, two, two very special women, one being her sister, Harriet Harris, who passed away early last month, and also her very good friend, uh, Roseanne, uh, excuse me, Rosellen Parsley. And I uh, believe she died, I don't even know what year that was, but that's been many years ago. About 12 years ago. Thank you, Alison. So we thank Marilyn for that and beautifying our sanctuary. We also want to celebrate uh, today with a couple of folks, including this lady right here who just spoke up, Alcy Miller. I believe we'll be celebrating 93 years on Thursday. Congratulations. Uh, not to be outdone, Bernice Dawson celebrating 97 on that same day, on Thursday. So congratulations to her. And uh, you see the note about Charlotte Parsley. We're thankful for her decision for Christ and her baptism soon. We also want to be much in prayer for those who've lost loved ones here lately, especially those uh, this past week whom we remembered uh, with Pete Hall's death and then also the death of Jessica Thompson. And we had a memorial services this week, a funeral and memorial service this week for them. We want to pray for their families as we think about Gene and family, Donnie and Shelby Kelly and all of that family how difficult it must be. I also want to remember uh, the family of Frances Vesley and her death last Sunday. Again, um, we just don't know what each day is going to hold, but we know who holds the day. And so may we truly trust God through all of these uh, situations in life. We have a number of people to continue to remember who are hospitalized, Susan Collins and also John Jones. This is Lily's son. The uh, hospital address is uh, not quite accurate. I uh, found out uh, yesterday in talking with Lily. I'll get that correct address this week when I see John, and we'll have that for you. But continue to pray for him. This uh, fella who uh, is, what, 60, 60 years old maybe, um, he has just really been struggling with his heart and the functionality. But he did have a procedure not long ago that uh, hopefully will help him. It'll be a slow progress, but hopefully he'll keep moving forward. We want to remember, especially this week, those who are having surgeries and procedures. Um, you'll see listed there Pat Hemsworth. She used to have a, a heart uh, uh, ultrasound on her heart this Wednesday. Praise God, she got through the stress test well and got good results on that this week. Karen McCarty is to have a uh, knee replacement coming up Friday. Uh, praise God that Shirley Riggleman got through her second cataract surgery. Let's pray for her full recovery. Robbie Robinson, who had major dental surgery uh, this Thursday, let's pray for his recovery. And also Ruth Baden, who has coming up this week another cardioversion. And Buddy White Cotton, thankfully, got through his second cardioversion this week, and he's trying to bridge that gap to uh, get the heart ablation, which is scheduled for March the 5th. So I appreciate so much y'all remembering these dear ones. In addition, Bob Lunsford, many of you know Bob. Bob is to have, an issue, have a procedure uh, done this coming Thursday 
including uh, bone marrow tests and blood work and so forth, or possible blood disorder. So we want to remember Bob in our prayers. Thank you for doing that. Again, we have so many to lift up to the Lord, and I'd like for us to especially remember those in other areas of the world who are undergoing a lot right now in terms of warfare. Um, I think we want to especially lift up today those people of all tribes, shall we say, all nationality, ethnicity in Gaza. Uh, that is a, a difficult place to be right now, I can't even imagine, as well as, of course, continued prayers for all of those in Ukraine and many other parts of the world as well. There are civil wars going on. And we know that only God can bring peace and only God can bring hope. And we pray that they would have that, that there would be some resolutions going about very soon. Pray for our leadership here in the states as well as worldwide for those who would make decisions that would be very impactful to thousands and tens of thousands of people. As we pray now, let's trust the Lord to listen and to care and to answer. Father, we come to you now with all faith and all trust, knowing that you have, have admonished us to do this, to cast our cares upon you, for you care for us, to give, a, give you our cares because you sustain us. And Lord, you know every need, every intricate detail but yet we as your children, as we sang about just a moment ago, and Michael reminded us, as believers in your son Jesus Christ, we are your children. And so as your children, we come to you this morning in a collective fashion, asking that you undergird and be with all of those who have needs of all types. Lord, I pray that you would be with families that are experiencing so much unrest right now, even within the family. Father, I pray that you would help those who have been estranged from loved ones. Lord, be with those who are hospitalized or in our rehab centers. Help them to regain their strength and their health. And Father, we know that sometimes healing comes by way of full healing, even the passing from this life to the next with you. And Father, we do ask that you be with these families who have been able to celebrate lives because of their hope and trust in you. But thank you, Lord, for giving us a life like Pete Hall, one who just meant so much to so many over many, many years, one who was instrumental in the development and growth of this church, your church at Hunton. And Father, we would ask that you bless those of other families who are just in much pain right now. Even though we are able to celebrate at times lives that are blessed and have been blessings, we also know there's that physical pain of loss. And so, Lord, undergird and comfort and give your peace to each one of these. We ask that you do the same to our brethren worldwide. And especially, Lord, those who are called to be missionaries and to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep them, we pray, out of harm's way. And may they be able to do the work that you have called them to. May we provide whatever we can in our own way to help them. The number one way always is to pray. And may we be faithful in that, not only as we gather on Sundays, but as we are in other groups and as we are individually in our own prayer closets throughout the week. May we stay on our knees, trusting you. May we be more dependent upon you each and every day. It is in Jesus' name we pray all of this. Amen. <laughs> Segway. Tooting their horns, if you could just, <laughs> if I could have all of our kindergarten through second grade to exit the back of the sanctuary. Thank you.
Father, we thank you for making it well with our souls. The only way we can be well is through the work that you have done in our lives. The work on the cross through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for giving us that greatest gift of all, salvation. May we live our lives as if we are saved. May others know that we are yours. Lord, today we thank you for the opportunity now to give back to you and to your kingdom's work. Lord, I pray that many lives will be changed because of our prayers and our financial giving. May we be faithful in that now and evermore. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let me be very open with you right now. I have shared this before in case I get accused of recirculating. But I'm sharing this today because of the point that I'd like to make for our message this morning. There was a doctor, he called one of his patients into his office and he needed to deliver to him some very important news. And he told him, he said, when he got there, I've received the results of your tests. And he said, I've got some bad news and some good news. Well, the patient obviously was very quiet and concerned at the moment. And so he sensed the severity of the announcement and said, well, let me go and have the good news first, doc, if you will. The doctor took a deep breath and he said, you only have... 24 hours to live. Oh my goodness, the patient shouted. If that's the good news, what could be the bad news? And of course, the doctor replied, I meant to tell you this yesterday. <laughs> what a difference a day can make. How many of you remember the fire that Hunton Church suffered? No, I don't mean the big fire in December of 1980. I'm talking about the fire that thankfully was contained on March the 1st, 2020. Did you expect that on your way to church that morning? Some of you were already here. Probably not. And if you remember also, it was only two weeks later, March the 15th, 2020, when we could not meet at all by government regulations because of COVID-19. 
Now, I'm bringing up these dates to remind us all of the uncertainty of life. Uncertainty of normal life. How important it is that we not take a single day or a single event for granted. James, the brother of Jesus, had something to say about this. And so for our scriptural text this morning, I'd like to read three verses from James chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. He says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and get gain. Whereas you do not know about tomorrow, what is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and we shall do this or that. These words of wisdom are from the Lord himself. May we be grateful for them. John Thomas asked several questions in response to this portion of the Holy Scriptures. What does the Bible say here? Don't foolishly think everything is going to be exactly the way you think it is going to be in the future. Even tomorrow. It says you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. Now, isn't that true? From your experience in life thus far, isn't that so? We have these plans. We have these expectations, these ideas about what the future will hold. And oftentimes, we build our whole lives around those expectations. But how often does something come up that we never expected? And just upsets the entire apple cart. We had no idea what was coming. Haven't we seen so much of this in our recent day? What a difference a day can make. Sure, sometimes a day can bring unexpected good and pleasant things. For example... 17 days ago, February the 1st, marked 10 years of my service as your full-time pastor. What if I had left the position on the 31st of January for whatever reason? Resignation, termination of employment, or termination of Frank Gore? i.e. death, then I would have served but nine years and 364 days, one day shy of 10 years. But because of that 365th day of the 10th year, you honored Gail and me in tremendous ways that we will cherish forever. The scriptural and pictorial memory book containing so many words and signatures of tribute along with the recollection of wonderful experiences and memories and of course the tropical vacation that you as a church granted Gail and I to take and enjoy. Lifelong memories for sure. Thank you again. But oftentimes a day can bring disappointment and even heartache or heartbreak concerning, first of all, as our first point this morning, concerning your life. Your life. How about that day when you were called into the president of the company's office or the senior vice president? or your direct supervisor, and you were informed that your position with the company had been 
eliminated. In my career, that has happened to me five times. Please don't say it's six. <laughs> and it happened to me three different times with one company. I guess I'm not very good at taking a hint. I never will forget any of these days, these occasions, especially one in particular. My family and I, we had just, just enjoyed a wonderful uh, family beach vacation at the Outer Banks. And then when I returned to work on Monday morning, I got the news from my direct supervisor, who, by the way, is just the nicest and fairest guy in the whole world. But he had to give me the news that my position with the company was being consolidated with another position due to restructuring. And I was the odd man out. You see, Sunday, that Sunday, when we concluded our vacation, that Sunday was just fine. Other than, of course, dreading to go back to work on Monday, right? But it was just fine. And Monday, I was facing unemployment. Now, as I flash back nearly 32 years, half of my age, I remember so well how excited Gail and I were to have our first daughter, Leah. Most of you know Leah. Now, I don't think our four-year-old son, Titus, shared our excitement as he was no longer an only child, plus he got a baby sister, not a baby brother. But when Leah was but three and a half weeks old, on the 6th of November in 1992, we had such a time, a fun time, really, as family there on that Friday night. I remember it so well. Then, one day later, at around 10 o'clock on Saturday night, I got the call. It was from my 18-year-old niece, Heather, informing me that her brother, Jason, age 21, he had been killed instantly in an auto accident. Our lives were really forever changed, especially the life of my dear sister Beth and her family and the loss of her one and only son. No doubt your life contains moments reflecting how one day one hour, one minute made such a profound difference in your life. What is your life, James says? For your life is a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. You say you will do this and do that, but only God knows if you will indeed do this or do that. You see, our plans, our lives, can change as we flip that daily calendar from one day to the next. How we need to keep in mind always the words from the Proverbs stated several times. We make our plans, but it's the Lord who directs our steps. Sometimes a day can bring disappointment and even heartache and heartbreak concerning, in the second place, the lives of loved ones. The lives of loved ones. Now, I mentioned my sister's tragic loss and how her life was changed from one minute to the next. But I want to certainly extend the range of my loved ones 
well beyond biological boundaries, especially when I consider my extended family of the church. You all are my extended family. I see you all as loved ones, for you are. Just in the past five weeks, consider with me those loved ones of the church whose lives have been turned upside down due to unexpected deaths. Donnie and Shelby Kelly, whose 41-year-old granddaughter, Jessica Thompson, a member with us here at Hunton, who went into Retreat Doctors Hospital for an issue and who had been doing so well in recent months. But due to a complication, asphyxiated or suffocated with really no medical hope of recovery. And her mother had to let her go. And so Jessica died there in the hospital, leaving behind her 11-year-old son, Noah. Jean Hall, whose beloved husband Pete went into Henrico Doctors Hospital nearly two weeks ago, battled COVID, fought like he always did. And by Saturday of that week, he was enjoying a great day. Every bit of feedback I've gotten was this. He was enjoying a great day of listening to his Richmond Spiders win their basketball game, eating chocolate cake, and talking with and even helping many folks in phone conversations and visits that day. But just one day later, Associate Pastor Page was informing you all of the Hunton congregation that Pete had gone home to be with the Lord late the night before. What a difference a day can make. As an aside here, I'll just I've shared this with a couple of you, but of course, Gail and I were on this wonderful vacation, and it was Sunday morning. I guess I should have been in church, but I was worshiping God through nature. Um, and there we were on one of the beaches there, late morning. My phone rang. Oh, I'm not supposed to take my phone with me, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but my phone rang, and I saw it was Paige. And so I answered, and I tried to talk, and it Obviously, it wasn't a good connection. He couldn't hear me. And just a minute or so later, he sent me a text message. And he said, Frank, I hate to disturb you on vacation, but I know you would want to know. And he told me about Pete's death. Friends, I looked at that message for no less than a minute. Just in disbelief, tearing up, thinking, Pete always bounces back. Not so this time. You know, we know we could also go back over the months and years and recall so many other cases of unexpected events and losses. Reminders of the uncertainty and the brevity of life. Some of you now are thinking about your own relatives and others, friends who've gone on before you. How important it is that we preface our plans as James admonishes us with the words, if the Lord wills, if the Lord wills, I will do this or I will do that. I've tried to, the first time I was exposed to this passage, I tried to learn from it and I've tried to put it into practice not always, but I, I try to be consistent. And when I tell people, I will, you know, instead of saying, well, yeah, I'll plan, to, I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that, I try to remember to say, well, I will plan to do that. 
And some of you even say, you know, if the Lord wills, right? Or good Lord willing and the crick don't rise. You know, those expressions we have. But there's so much wisdom in that. Because we are not in control of any of this. Yes, we choose to sin. And we do. And we fall short. And praise God, His grace prevails through the blood of Jesus Christ. But we don't know what the next day is going to hold for us or for anyone else, including here, our, our loved ones. So yes, sometimes a day can bring disappointment and even heartache and heartbreak concerning our lives, concerning the lives of loved ones. But reality should be most set concerning this third point today the lives of lost ones. The lives of lost ones. On Friday, we celebrated the life and legacy of 90-year-old Pete Hall, a faithful member of Hunton Baptist Church for more than 58 years. Now, how could we possibly celebrate in the aftermath of death and loss? Because we have hope. We have hope. That's how we can celebrate. And that's why we celebrate. We have hope. Yesterday, we celebrated the life of Jessica Thompson. How could we even consider celebrating when one so relatively young left this earth, leaving behind a devastated family? Because of hope. Her belief in the Lord Jesus Christ is why. You see, we as believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have the ultimate hope, a hope that does not disappoint. But what about the lives of lost ones? Those who do not know and have not professed Jesus as Savior. And thus have no hope really whatsoever. That's where we come in. Knowing that one day can make a big, even a huge difference. We need to be as resolved as ever to make Christ known. To introduce our Jesus to everyone we encounter. Each and every day. Doesn't it hurt to consider the fact that people's lives are turned upside down and they have no hope to enable them to rebuild, to regroup, to carry on? Remember, we too once were lost, were we not? Now we're found. Praise God, we're found. I once was lost, but now am found. Let's pledge to help others to find their way to Christ. On January the 13th, 2012, the massive Costa Concordia cruise ship with more than 4,200 passengers and crew on board, was sailing off the coast of Italy on a tour of the Mediterranean Sea. The captain deviated from his planned course and the ship struck a reef near the shore. After taking on water for a while, the ship began to sink. Abandoning his duty to the passengers and crew, Captain Francesco Chattino, he left the ship. He left the ship instead of remaining to make sure everyone could be rescued. 32 passengers and crew died. Some of those without hope.
the plight of the lost should disturb us. It should disturb us so that so much that we cannot do otherwise but to begin to share the love of Jesus Christ with everybody we meet. Perhaps we could share with others an illustration like the one I'd like to close with this morning. It's a testimony of faith, not fear. It's a testimony that difference, that difference-making day comes. And when that comes, we can trust our Lord and Savior Jesus no matter what comes our way, even death. There was a man who was sick, and quite sick, actually. He turned to his doctor, and he said, Doc, I'm, I'm afraid to die. I'm just afraid to die. Can you tell me what lies on the other side? Very quietly, the doctor said, I, I don't know. And at that moment, a dog sprang into the room and leaped on the doctor with an eager show of gladness. Turning to the patient, the doctor said, did you notice my dog? He's never been in this room before. He didn't know what was inside. He knew nothing except that his master was here. And when the door opened, he sprang in without fear. I know little of what is on the other side of death, but I do know one thing. I know my master is there. And that is enough. And when the door opens, I will pass through it with gladness, not with fear. May that be perhaps something we could share with someone who lacks that hope. Someone who has not yet accepted Jesus as Savior. Perhaps a way to comfort him or her and to assure them of the importance of getting to know the master. I hope and pray, friends, that we would realize that this message today is not meant to be morbid, not at all, but rather hopeful. True, yes, we don't know what today, the rest of today or tomorrow holds, but God knows, and as we trust in him, with all of our being, we will have that perfect peace that passes all understanding so that no matter what comes our way, we're going to be okay. I thank you for trusting Christ. There may be someone here this morning, though, who has not yet made that decision for Jesus. Maybe someone who's watching with us online today you know who you are. We want you to know that we care about you. And we pray for you. Maybe not by name if we don't know, but we pray for you. We pray for the lost. And we say lost because of our relationship with Jesus. So may this day be the day that if you haven't done so, you haven't realized and haven't recognized and haven't acknowledged that Jesus went to the cross, not just for the sake of doing it, but he did it for you. He did it for you. He died in your place. If this is the day that God is calling you, if, if the Holy Spirit, which he will, is nudging you, don't hesitate. Don't put it off any longer. Do like Charlotte Parsley did a couple of Sundays ago. And just come on down this aisle and let it be known. And we will pray and we will give God the glory. 
It'll be the best and biggest decision of your life. We're going to sing our closing song. And I'll stand here at the front as our praise team leads us today and our band here. And as we sing together, you do what you are led to do. I, said, I say this oftentimes, and I mean it. If you're uncertain about the whole thing of Christianity or what it means to be a Christian, call me. Come by. Email me. Contact me in some way. I'll be very happy to sit down with you and talk further about it. Maybe today you're ready to make that decision to be a member here at Hunt Baptist Church. If you've been here a while, you enjoy the church, you find the people friendly, genuine, which they are, very welcoming, and you want to get involved in more in the life of the church to help out and to be on board, be on mission to share the good news of the gospel with all, then we welcome you to make that decision. However you choose to do so, you can move a membership from elsewhere or you can just say, I come on my statement of faith today, trust in the Lord Jesus. Whatever it might be, as we stand and sing, you come as you're led. <laughs> considers you worthy. Wow. The creator of the universe considers you worthy. Worthy enough to ultimately die for you. Praise the Heavenly Father. Praise the Heavenly Father for raising the Son there on that third day. And now we have that ultimate hope. And the hope of life resurrected the hope of being in heaven with God forevermore. Just like these we've talked about today who are now, no doubt, residing with him. I pray that God will give you a good day and a good week and that uh, you won't have any of those unexpected negative events. We don't know, but may the Lord be with you through it all. Let us pray. Father, as we go today, I am thankful that you've given us these instructions in your word and how to pray and how to talk and how to go about our lives and not assuming anything but rather trusting you for everything and may we be faithful in that and may we go sharing the love of Christ with everyone what a privilege it is to do so may you be glorified in Jesus name we pray amen